that. Functions, I, there's a lot. I mean, there's a whole lot that we can go into functions, but what I'm going to do here is simply use the idea of replacing a value here into x and in the context of evaluating this expression. So you notice in this expression we need to find f of x and f of x plus h. Okay, so let's do that. We have f of x already, so we know this guy is going to go in place of this whole thing here. If we want f of x plus h, well, keep in mind that whatever gets replaced into this group of parentheses here goes here. I might as well put parentheses around it as well. So if it was f of 3, you'd put 3 here and 3 here. If it was f of 8, you'd put 8 here and 8 here. In this case, it doesn't say 3 or 8. It says x plus h, which means this whole thing gets replaced into this whole thing. So since the pattern essentially is 3 times whatever you plug in, minus 5, the part that we plug in in this case being x plus h. So this is f of x plus h, and we're going to take this guy and put it here. So there we are. Keep in mind f of x plus h is this entire statement. I'm using brackets, by the way, as separators. And then 3x minus 5, and no, there's nothing special about the parentheses. I simply put that there just to remind you that whatever goes in here goes in here. From here, you're just using your basic algebra skills. You know, you're collecting like terms, you're distributing and simplifying and all that business. So distributing 3 and then distributing the negative gives us this. After that, you are uh, just simply collecting any like terms, or in this case, we're canceling out like terms because these are opposites. And that leaves us with 3h over h, which again reduces and gives us just 3. So 3 is our answer. And that's all there is. Continuing on, on functions, here I'm going to give you a graph, and I'm going to ask you specific information about it. So determine its domain, its range, the uh, specific y values given these two x values, and then state which intervals are increasing, decreasing, and are constant. So let's first focus on domain. Domain refers to all the values of x, and perhaps the easiest way to think of this is to reduce this down to, if you can, mentally compress this thing down to the um, x axis. So if you were to do that, it would look something like this. And my drawing is not so pretty, but there we are. So you can see that it would essentially, from 6, start covering it all the way to negative infinity. Therefore, what's your domain? Well, your domain simply spans from negative infinity to 6. And that's it. Range is very similar. With range, you're talking about the y values, though. So using the same idea, we're going to kind of compress this towards the y-axis. And keep in mind, this is a very linear it's a it's a linear way of thinking so essentially if you reduce it down to that you can see very easily what values it covers we have a minimum of negative two but since we had an arrow originally going up we know this thing is going to keep going forever and ever and ever therefore our range has a lower bound of negative two and no upper bound it just keeps going so therefore, our interval spans from negative 2 to infinity. f of negative 2 and f of 3, this simply refers to points. So f of negative 2 means the x value is negative 2. In other words, if you have negative 2, what's the y coordinate? Well, there's the point right there where it's negative 2. 
So what's the y value for it? It's simply 1, and that's the answer to this guy. Use the same logic for f of 3. You're talking about when 3 is the x value, what is the y value? Well, right here is the coordinate. You go across 3, you're up how many? 4. Therefore, 4 is the solution to that one. Okay, this section here, increasing, decreasing, constant, is much like domain. The only difference is, is that with domain, you want to know all the possible x values. But with increasing and decreasing and constant, you are only considering just uh, those parts of the graph. So let's think about increasing here. Where is this graph increasing? That's what we want to know. Now, what I mean by that is, where is this thing going up? And, well, we can see it's going up from here to here, essentially. So just like with the domain, when we had to mentally compress this thing to the axis here, do the same thing, but only just for this portion here. So for this portion here, you'll notice that it covers, essentially, these x values. You see how it spans from here to here? Going across. That's all we're interested in for the interval being increasing. We speak in terms of x because this variable is independent. Therefore, what values are we talking about? Well, we're going from negative 2 to, uh, about, we'll say, 1.5. And, and that's really it. Use the same logic for decreasing. For decreasing, again, you're only thinking about when this thing is going down. And uh, please note it's going down in two intervals. This is the obvious one. And this is the less obvious one. A lot of students miss this one here. So just as before, consider what values are we covering horizontally? Well, horizontally, we're talking this part of it, right? Because it's going down this way until we get to here, stop. So therefore, where is it decreasing? Well, from negative infinity to negative 2. You'll also notice that it's decreasing starting from here to here. Again, what x values are we talking about? Starting from here until here, right? And it's, by the way, I'm drawing this not because this is where it crosses, but rather this is where it stops going down. So it's, uh, it's supposed to be even with that x value. So from about 1.5 to 4. And since we have two intervals, whoops. Since we have two intervals there, we'll just join them together using this u here for union. Constant, well, it means not up, not down, but the same. So we're constant from here to here. That's from 4 to 6. Again, just the x values in which it is remaining the same. And that would be the end of that. OK, average rate. Average rate, when you see the word rate, think slope. It is the very first rate that you were taught in algebra. And even before algebra, you were taught rate was slope. You, they just didn't use the word slope. So I want to remind you of the slope formula. That's it. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Keep in mind, you are already given x1 and x2. So you know to put 3 minus negative 1 on the bottom when you're done. What you need are the y2 and the y1s. So what you do is this. If you take x1 and you plug it in, your answer will be y1. If you take x through x2 and plug it in, your answer will be y2. So we'll do that right here. f of negative 1 ends up being 5, and f of 3 ends up being negative 3, which essentially means this. Negative 1, 5 is a point, and also 3, negative 3 is a point. So we have our two coordinates. Now you're ready to calculate slope. 
only its average rate. So there you are. And then from here, do your calculation, simplifying, etc., etc. Okay, that's it for this video, and uh, I'll catch you next time.